You're twice as sure with two great names, Frigidaire and General Motors. Frigidaire presents Hollywood Star Time. Today we bring you the first radio performance of Junior Miss, starring 1946 Academy Award winner... Peggy Ann Garner, with Alan Joslin, Barbara Whiting, and Michael Dunn. <laughs> Each week at this time, Frigidaire brings you radio versions of Hollywood's finest motion pictures with Hollywood's greatest stars. Today you will hear Peggy Ann Garner and an all-star picture cast in the first radio production of the delightful 20th Century Fox picture, Junior Miss. Peggy Ann Garner and Barbara Whiting will be seen in the forthcoming 20th Century Fox production, Home Sweet Homicide. Now, in just a few moments, Junior Miss. Frigidaire, the greatest name in refrigeration, is made only by General Motors. And it is this association of experience with experience, of skill with skill that makes Frigidaire America's favorite refrigerator today. The seven million Frigidaires built and sold are the best proof of Frigidaire's outstanding record of dependability, of lasting satisfaction. For back of every great refrigeration principle pioneered by Frigidaire, back of every exciting new Frigidaire feature, back of every exclusive Frigidaire advantage, is one all-important purpose. To keep food good to eat. Remember this when you choose your new refrigerator. Remember the record of millions of Frigidaires in millions of American kitchens. And remember, you're twice as sure with two great names. For Frigidaire is made only by General Motors. And our Junior Miss starring Peggy Ann Garner with Alan Joslin, Barbara Whiting, and Michael Dunn, and another colorful musical score conceived and conducted by Alfred Newman. Oh dear, I don't know. What would you have done? I wonder how would Betty Davis handle it. Although I really consider myself more of the Jean Tyranny type. So I wonder, what would Jean Tyranny do? Suppose she walked into her living room and saw her father making love to his boss's daughter. I suppose she'd like that, huh? I suppose she wouldn't take steps. If it worked for Uncle Willis... Well, let's start with Uncle Willis, sort of. I live with my mother and father in a New York apartment. I also have a sister named Lois, who is rather corny, but she'll pass. Well, I had to write my autobiography for school, and I was getting some background material from Daddy. Just asking him a few personal questions is all. Uh, well, I was born in Brooklyn Heights, New York, and... Uh, oh, dear. I'm sorry, Judy. I wish I'd been born in British Somaliland or... or in the Ferris wheel at Coney Island. Go on. Well, I went to public school in Brooklyn, Stuyvesant High School in New York, and uh, Yale University in New Haven. Yale okay with you, Judy? Okay, on Yale. Good. I met your mother shortly after the First World War, and soon after, I married her. Go on. So far, it's not much of a life. Well, I'm sorry, Judy. Who do you want for a father, Rasputin? Oh, well, what's the matter now? Are you being annoying again, Judy? Oh, Lois, go soak your head. Nothing's the matter with you. Nothing's the matter with your sister, Lois. Judy's writing her autobiography and wanted some facts about our family. Not about Uncle Willis, I hope. There she goes with that Uncle Willis again. What's there about Uncle Willis that I can't know, too? I told you before, there's nothing about him. Your Uncle Willis has just been away for a long time. That's Bobby. All right, let me out of this. I've got to get shaved. My boss is coming over in 20 minutes. Oh, but let me finish first, Dad. I've got a date. No, this is business. Hey, what's the idea of keeping me out there? Hi, Fuffy. What smells? Lois's perfume. She drenches herself with it when she's going on a date. Isn't it too curdling? What's it called, death in the afternoon? <laughs> what about Mary Caswell's party? Did you get somebody? For me? 
I unearthed the character called Haskell Cummings. He's downstairs in my apartment playing chess with my brother. Should we happen to walk in on them? Accidentally on purpose? All right. Excuse me. Judy Graves, are you going to have hiccups again? Well, I can't help it. Every time, every time, I get excited. Oh, excuse me. I get the coughs. Excuse me. Uh, shall we join the gentleman? <laughs> I'm going to exert a little pressure just under your ears, Miss Graves. Pressure on the phrenic nerve sometimes controls the spasms of the diaphragm, commonly referred to as hiccoughs. Ready? Ready. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Oh, does that hurt? Oh, no. Go right ahead. Beg pardon. You see, your hiccoughs are diminishing in frequency and violence already. You're absolutely nothing but a genius, Haskell. A genius. There, Miss Graves. I think we may consider the present attack of Hickoffs completely cured. Why, it's wonderful. You're a regular doctor, Haskell. And canny Roomba. Uh, do you dance, Miss Graves? Why, uh, does she dance? Does Bing sing? <laughs> I dance, Haskell. Because, uh, well, I hadn't selected a partner for Mary Caswell's party New Year's Day. If you'd be interested, Miss Graves? Why, well, let me see now, Oh, dear. She means yes. Well, this is your door, Judy. See you later. Thanks a lot for fixing my date with Haskell Cummings. It was a breeze. Flatter the lads and they'll love you. I'd hate to have to hiccup all my life to hold a husband. Well, I'd ask you in, Fluffy, but Dad's boss is inside, and I suppose he'll want to say hello to me. How drab. So this is Judy. My, 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 how you've grown. What do they expect us to do, get smaller? <laughs> it won't be so bad. His daughter Ellen's with him, and she's a real good egg. I better go in, Fluffy. Well, don't fall off any swinging doors. Adios, senor. See you tomorrow, Fluffy. Well, 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 well. And this is Judy, I bet. Hello, Mr. Curtis. My, 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 how you've grown. <laughs> Hello, Judy. Hello, Ellen. Let's go skating again soon, huh? Oh, sounds like a capital idea. I think dinner sounds like a capital idea, too, so you better get washed, Judy. Okay, Mom. Excuse me, family. I'll shout when soup is on, which will be soon. I think I'm getting new ice skates for Christmas, Ellen. Well, I must say that's subtle. Oh, I'll get it. That's for me. Off the tracks for your lives. Here comes the limited. That's Mr. Merrill of your box. We're going skating tonight. Hello, Merrill. Come in. Hi, Lois. Ellen, this is Mr. Feuerbach. Mr. Curtis, my father, my sister Judy, Mr. Feuerbach. Uh, hello, all. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Feuerbach, eh? So you're taking lower skating, are you? Uh, yes, sir. Rockefeller Center. Uh, is it getting colder out, Merrill? Uh, uh, no, sir. Uh, but it's starting to snow a young blizzard. Oh. <laughs> Just like the one we had back in 88, huh, Feuerbach? <laughs> well, I, uh... Well, good night, Merrill. <laughs> You'll have Lois back here by 10.30, won't you? Uh, yes, sir, by 10.30. Good night, everyone. Oh, dear. Reminds me when Ellen was a kid, always had one of those drugstore cowboys hanging around the house. Yes, and you used to make them just as uncomfortable as you made Merrill Feuerbach. Soup on, race you for it, folks. Tantivy, 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 ta-da, ta-da, ta-da. Daddy, Ellen, you coming? Wait, Ellen. Be right with you, Judy. I'm sorry for that little burst of temper, Harry. Look, Ellen, why do you let your father treat you like a ten-year-old? You've your own life to lead. It's too late to change now. You're young, you're attractive, and you waste yourself working in his office, keeping house for him... Always entertaining his friends, never your own. I know. You've got to break away, Ellen. Thanks, Harry. I'll work it out some way. I don't know how to thank you, but will you take this on account? Right there in our own living room, I saw Ellen kiss my father. I come back to call them to dinner, and there they were, mushing it up. You're sweet, Harry, really. You're pretty sweet yourself. And, you know, you need someone to help you. One of these days... You and I are going to do something about it. I was stunned. 
I guess I didn't sleep much that night. Next day, I met Fluffy in Central Park. Fluffy'd understand. She saw so many movies. Ellen Curtis? I can't believe it. Why, she wears glasses. I know, but they're very becoming. But she's so old. Twenty-five. Father's older. Judy, are you sure you're not just kicking the gong around? It's the honest truth. Rat hole? Rat hole. Say it then. It's the truth, and if it isn't, may I swallow a rat hole? Boy, this is serious. What a mess passion makes out of people's lives. Well, you can always buy Ellen Curtis off. Honest, Puffy, she's not that kind of a girl. Oh, no? Dangle a grand in front of her kisser and you'll see. <laughs> I'll have to think of a cheaper way. Let's go to a movie and think about it. What's playing? It's about a fellow drooling over some woman, and the guy's brother doesn't like her. So this brother gets a friend of his who's tall, dark, and with a divine smile. And this guy takes the woman away from the brother. Solid. I saw it. Hey, Judy, you better snap out of it. You'll have a mental collapse like Gregory Pegg. Which picture was that? Any picture. They have mental collapses in all the pictures now. It's the fashion. <laughs> That evening, Mom and Dad went out to call on Ellen and Mr. Curtis again. It was supposed to be business. Maybe a junior partnership in the law firm. Anyhow, that was Daddy's story. Poor unsuspecting Mama. How could I tell her? How would Jean Tierney handle it? Well, I I couldn't sleep, so I sat up in bed trying to read. When all at once... Couldn't be Lois. Lois had her keys. I went to the door to see who it was. Yes? Uh, isn't this the Graves apartment? Yes, but everybody's out. Oh, well, uh, well, just tell your mother and father that Uncle Willis dropped by. Uncle Willis? Well, gee, come on in. <laughs> Thank mm, you. I know all about you. How do you? You've been away for a long, long time. Yes, yes, a very long time. You're awfully pale. Well, I guess maybe I am. Who wouldn't be? Huh? When did they let you out? What? Oh, don't discuss it if you'd rather not. Only I hope you're not bitter. Uh, no, I don't think I am. That's good. Tyrone Powell was awfully bitter. Oh, he was? Yes, and Johnny Apollo. He tried so hard to go straight. But every job he got, they fired him when they found out. Oh. Uh, well, uh, tell your parents I was here. I've got to find a place to stay. Oh, no, you can stay right here. You can sleep in our room and Lost and I'll sleep on the convertible couch in the living room. Uh, well, it's... Uh... It's going to be rough finding a hotel room around the holidays, especially. So, well, I'm going to accept your very gracious offer. Thank you very much. <laughs> You're perfectly welcome. <gasps> Are you married? No. <laughs> I just asked. <sighs> Do you agree with Dorothy Parker that men never make passes at girls who wear glasses? Do you wear glasses? Oh, no. It's a bitter viewpoint, and I just was testing to see if you were bitter. Well, for the record, then, uh, men frequently make passes at girls who wear glasses. No. That's nice. (laughs) Now, uh, which room did you say is mine? Hello? Hello, Fluffy. Oh, Fluffy, it's marvelous. Remember the tall, dark, handsome man with the divine smile who took the woman away from the brother in the movie? Well, he's here. My Uncle Willis. Yeah. Hallelujah! In a few moments, Frigid Air will bring you the second act of Junior Miss, starring 1946 Academy Award winner Peggy Ann Garner. Frigid Air, the best-remembered name in refrigeration, has devoted its lifetime to making American homes happier and healthier places. For in building a Frigid Air refrigerator, the emphasis is placed on how well it keeps food, how economically it performs. A Frigid Air refrigerator is designed to accommodate many kinds of food, perform many services, usually at the same time. It must make lots of ice and make it fast. It must keep meats fresh and wholesome. Keep vegetables crisp, green, vitamin-rich. It must keep leftovers, butter and eggs, and milk at their appetizing best. And today, it must freeze foods, keep them frozen. The frigid air refrigerator must do all these things with ease, with economy, with complete dependability. And it does, because it was built with a stout heart. 
The heart of every new Frigidaire is the meter miser, the simplest cold-making mechanism ever built. It's so quiet, you can hardly hear it run, so efficient that it uses no more current than an ordinary light bulb. The meter miser makes possible the variety of refrigeration services you can get from a Frigidaire, and its simplicity of design assures you of outstanding dependability year in, year out. Remember this when you choose your new refrigerator. Remember, it's the mechanism that really counts in a refrigerator. And remember, you're twice as sure with two great names. For Frigidaire is made only by General Motors. Continue with the first radio presentation of the 20th Century Fox Picture Junior Miss, starring Peggy Ann Garner with Alan Joslin, Barbara Whiting, and Michael Dunn. Alan Joslin soon may be seen in the 20th Century Fox production, It Shouldn't Happen to a Dog. Now, Act Two of Junior Miss. <laughs> certainly destiny that Uncle Willis came back home just when he did. I had it all figured out to have Uncle Willis meet Ellen and woo her away from Daddy, who had no business falling in love with her anyhow, especially when she was the boss's daughter. Daddy'd have to get that junior partnership some other way, that's all. Christmas morning, Fluffy came up to get a Christmas present and have a look at Uncle Willis. You know something, Judy? Do you like Uncle Willis? I just figured out who he looks like. He's a cross between Cary Grant, Henry Fonda, and Tyrone Power. With just a suggestion of Jimmy Stewart. Hmm. Now that you mention it, I can see the resemblance. Ellen's going skating with me at Rockefeller Center today. But I made a date with Uncle Willis for the same time to meet me there. Get it, Puffy? Get it? looking around like that. Expecting anyone? Oh, no. Don't you think it's dangerous to wear your glasses skating, Ellen? Oh, I never fall. At least not on my face. Hi, Judy. Well, Uncle Willis, fancy that. <laughs> well, I'm sorry if I'm a little late, Judy, but I... Ellen, Ellen, may I forget my Uncle Willis? Uncle Willis, this is Ellen. Well, uh, how do you do, Ellen? How do you do, Uncle Willis? Now, isn't that a new... My sock is all bunched up inside my shoe. I'd better fix it if I don't want a blister. I'll be right back, children. Children. <laughs> my full name is Ellen Curtis. Oh, my full name is Uncle Willis Reynolds. I uh, suppose you realize that Judy has seen a great many motion pictures. I think I know what you mean. <laughs> I think she's got me worked into a story. <laughs> <laughs> me too. It seems that Judy thinks I did a stretch in prison. So she's, uh, well, building a new and better life for me, of which evidently her to play a large part. I think. <laughs> Are you getting chilly, Uncle Willis? Uh, oh, shall we stay? <laughs> Hello. Hello, Miss Vincent. I've got a lot of dictation here. Where's my daughter gone to? Shopping. A dress? What for? She's got a dress. A hairdresser? Well, she can do her own hair. She always did. She won't be in at all, the optometrist. What's the matter with the glasses she's got? Oh, never mind. Get me Haskell Cummings on the telephone. It's important. <laughs> Tried to talk to Haskell Cummings last night, Harry. Oh, what luck. None. He's on a vacation. Oh, uh, you'll excuse us if we talk business for just ten seconds, Mrs. Graves, won't you? Why, of course, Mr. Curtis. Because if we land Haskell Cummings, the new year is going to be the happiest you've ever known. Yes, sir. Then by all means, land Haskell Cummings. <laughs> ah, I got great plans for Harry. Now, Harry, you have a way with Cummings. Uh, keep on working from your angle. And let's see if we can swing something. Ellen, take this down. Oh, Don, I forget she's not with me. First New Year's Eve we haven't spent together. I hope she's feeling all right, J.B. Uh, I don't know. I, I can't figure her out lately. Oh, what's the matter with him? It isn't New Year's yet.
Well, Ellen, Happy New Year. Half a minute to go, Willie. I know, but everyone loves everyone else at midnight. I want you to know I love you 15 seconds before midnight. Oh, it's been wonderful, Willis. Thanks to Judy. <laughs> to Judy, then? To Judy. 12 o'clock, folks. Happy New Year, Ellen. Happy New Year. <laughs> I'm coming. Well, happy new year, Judy. Oh, hello, Mr. Curtis. Come in. Everyone's still in bed. <laughs> Sissy's panty waist. Can't take it anymore, can they? <laughs> Mr. Curtis, the time has come for could I ask you something? Sure. What is it? You have a very large law business, haven't you? Well, we can handle. And your father's going to be a very important part of it. Well, Mr. Curtis... If you know of a man who'd been in prison, but he paid his debt to society, you'd want to help him out, wouldn't you? <laughs> I like nothing better than filling my office with ex-convicts. <laughs> oh, that's swell. On account of Ellen, too, I mean. Ellen? Yes, what about Ellen? Well, it's practically sure she's going to marry Uncle Willis. Who is Uncle Willis? And what are you trying to say, oh, huh? Oh, what's the matter, J.B.? Uh, what? Harry, what the dickens is the idea of letting my girl run around with that jailbird brother of yours? Willis is what? my brother. And he isn't a jailbird. And he doesn't even know Ellen. Oh, he knows her all right. Well, who is this Uncle Willis? He's Grace's brother, and he's one of my best friends. We yes. practiced law together when we first got out of college. Oh, Willis Reynolds, that drunkard. He drunkard. isn't. What, what he do hasn't you mean? touched a drop He went away years. a long time ago to cure himself of the habit. Oh, Oh, gee, well, I thought that... Oh, will you get it, please, Grace? Oh, coming, coming. Ellen, Willis. Oh, Grace. Well, I informed you the list, folks. Ellen. Oh, Dad, I'm so glad you're here. Willis, this is my father. Dad, this is Willis Reynolds, my husband. That does it. <laughs> I don't believe it. We're so happy, Dad. And we owe it all to Judy here. That's my Judy. <laughs> Graves... You can call for your things at the office tomorrow and move out. Now, look. You're I... fired! Oh. Oh, no. Hi, everybody, and a slap Happy New Year to one and all. Oh, Puffy, go away. Get out of here, Puffy. Please go away. <laughs> Are we going to be poor? Hmm? The Bateses are poor and they don't mind it. They all cook and take turns washing dishes. They have a lot of fun. Well, we're going to have lots more fun than the Bateses. <laughs> what smells? I took a bubble bath. <laughs> I was going over to Mary Caswell's party. They'll know you're there, all right. <laughs> no, they won't. I'm not going. I heard you telling Mama how you'd have to start all over again at the bottom. And at your age. I heard you, and it's all my fault. Oh, Judy, Judy. <laughs> you're dressed for the party, and you smell real pretty. And when your young man calls for you, you're going, see? That's an order. All right, all right. Come in, come in. Oh, back again, J.B.? Graves, I want Ellen. Where is she? Have you tried dragging the river? Don't be so witty, Harry. That wasn't a witticism. It was a criticism. Well, where is she? I wouldn't know. Oh, I'll get it. It's for me. Oh, clear the tracks. Here comes the flyer. I know it's for me, because I expect a call from Albert Canote. Hello? Oh, it's Haskell Cummings in the lobby. Tell him yes, to come it. right up. Come right up. Oh, I live a hermit's life. That's what the life of a hermit. Oh, I get it now, Gray. Do you? Haskell Cummings, is it? Are you going to object to all my friends? You didn't mind getting fired. You were planning all the time to steal the Cummings account, and now I suppose it's in the bag. Oh, now, wait a minute, All right, all right, all right. You got me, Harry. Bring Haskell Cummings into our fold as our client, and you get a junior partnership. No, you're making a mistake, J.B., and all fair. All right. Right. I've been unfair to Uncle Willis, but I'll give him a job, too. Does that rectify my mistake? Now, let me explain. Never I'm... mind. Shall we shake hands on it? When J.B. Curtis shakes hands on a deal, it sticks. It what? Oh, sticks. <laughs> All right.
I say be safe. Come in. Oh, how do you do, Mr. Graves? Hello, Judy. Hello, Mr. Curtis. Uh, this is Haskell Cummings. This? <laughs> well, yes. Haskell Cummings, Jr. Harry. I tried to tell you, J.B. You tried to tell me. You tried to By tell me. By the way, Mr. Graves, my dad called from where he's vacationing in New Hampshire. Oh, did he? He did? He sends you his regards, sir. Does he? He does? He says for me to tell you he has something very important to discuss with you as soon as he gets back. Well, fine. Well, fine. fine. Did you hear that, Harry? Cummings has something very yes, important. Yes, I heard him, J.B. Say, Judy, you look all right. Do I, Haskell? Do I really? Do you? Oh, you look stunning. Oh, Judy. Thank you, J.B. It's my first formal party dress. I haven't noticed. Why, why, she's grown up, J.B. Oh, that she has. Well, should we, uh, shall we go, Judy? Home yes. by 10.30, Judy. Uh, well, uh, 11's all right tonight, Judy. Yes, Father. Goodbye. Goodbye, gentlemen. Goodbye, J.B. Goodbye, Miss Graves. Well, all I can say, Harry, is... That's some girl you've got there. Thank you, J.B. We like her. Hey, Judy, what's with Uncle Willis and the beaming bride? Oh, fine, Puffy. But you know something? Uncle Willis wasn't in prison at all. It was... it was something else. And you know what? What? Besides Jimmy Stewart and Henry Fonda and Tyrone Power... You know who Uncle Willis strongly reminds me of most? Who, Judy? Ray Milan. <laughs> yes, that was really fun. And we say a special thanks to Peggy Ann Garner for her swell portrayal of the lovable Judy Graves. Peggy Ann will be back in just a moment. We'd like also to express our appreciation to Alan Joslin, who played Judy's father, Barbara Whiting, who was Fuffy, and Michael Dunn, who played Uncle Willis, all of whom were in the picture. The radio adaptation of Junior Miss was written by Milton Geiger. Music was supervised by Alfred Newman, and the production was under the direction of Robert L. Redd. Hollywood Star Time is presented each week at this time with the best wishes of your Frigidaire dealer who invites you to come in and learn about the famous line of Frigidaire home appliances, electric refrigerators, electric ranges, electric water heaters, home freezers, and a wide variety of refrigerating and air conditioning equipment for homes, farms, stores, offices, and factories. <laughs> And here now is Peggy Ann Garner. You know, Peggy Ann, I was just counting up on my fingers. It was ten weeks ago today you appeared on our show as the very serious little Francie Nolan in our version of A Tree Grows in Brooklyn. I know, Mr. Niles. And now today you've cut up a comedy caper as Judy Graves. Which type of role do you like to play best? Well, honestly, I don't know. I love being both Francie and Judy. But I know one thing sure, Mr. Niles... I'm going to tune in Hollywood Star Time next week when two of my favorite stars, Lloyd Nolan and Sidney Hassel, will do Strange Triangle. I know it's going to be super. Till then, it's goodbye. This is Wendell Niles speaking for Frigidaire, made only by General Motors. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.